come and forth, God. So we bind them in the name of Jesus and we lose the Holy Spirit to take full control of this meeting, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Lord, I pray your will will be done in this meeting, God. We welcome your presence. We welcome the Holy Spirit. We welcome God the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you will take full control of this meeting, God. We pray all the needs of your people will be met over and above and that your people will have all sufficiency for all things and do abound to all good works. Father, I pray for the um, salvation of everyone who is not saved, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray everybody under the sound of my voice will be saved in the name of Jesus. And even those who will watch this meeting later on YouTube, or at another date, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray for those who are needing healing, God, that you will heal them, God. We pray for those in need of finances, in need of jobs, that you will supply all your people's needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers, God, because according to Isaiah 55, 11, your word cannot return to you void. So we give you honor and we give you glory and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So I welcome you. Thank you for taking the time to tune into this uh, meeting. Let us begin with the word because um, we already start. We have already begun in prayer. So today I will be ministering on loving others, loving others. Someone may think, well, you know what? I hate myself. How can I love others? You have to begin with loving yourself. Someone says charity begins at home. You need to love yourself love God and love others because you cannot give away what you don't have and God created you in the image in his image in the image of righteousness in the image of love in the image of goodness in the image of every good and perfect gift in the image of God the Father Jesus the Son and the Holy Ghost and he created you in his image so what gives you the right to hate yourself and God is love and he loves you unconditionally he loves you with an unconditional agape love I love that never fails I love that never ends and nothing shall separate us from the love of God so how dare you hate yourself praise god we need to love what god loves and to hate what he hates and i tell you god loves all people hallelujah he loves the drug dealer hallelujah he loves the serial killer he he loves the um person who um produces the monster movies praise god he he loves the thief praise god he loves the sinner praise the name of jesus he loved us all and all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and since all have sinned all can be saved all need a savior praise god hallelujah and those who are saved who have already been born again and given their life to jesus we still need god so that we can stay saved we need him so that we can produce the fruit of the spirit so that we can walk in love hallelujah so that we can believe the best of others so that we can forgive others so that we cannot allow roots of bitterness to dwell in us praise god so we need to forgive others even as god as god has forgiven us praise the name of jesus when we walk in love love never fails so you need to begin by loving god hallelujah loving yourself and you can love others so if you hate yourself just say this little prayer oh god thank you for creating me in your image I am created in the image of righteousness, in the image of goodness, in the image of the light, because God is the light. Praise God. I am, uh, uh, <laughs> I am your child. Praise God. I'm a friend of God. Help me to get rid of all self hatred, God, and help me if I'm walking in unforgiveness towards myself to forgive myself so that I can forgive others. Hallelujah. Let's go to St. John. Praise God. The Gospel of John, chapter 13, 34 and 35. Because God has given us a new commandment. And if we are walking in unforgiveness, we cannot walk in the, the commandment. We cannot obey the commandment. Because he says, a new commandment I give unto you, that you have love one for another. By this, by this what? This unconditional love. Praise God. This love that never fails. Hallelujah. This love that never ends. Praise God shall men know that you are my disciples could it be a lack of love that's why the church is, is not uh, ministering in, in as much power and as a much anointing praise god and demonstrating the power of the holy spirit could it be 
because of a lack of love? Could it be that the body of Christ has gone stone cold? Praise the name of Jesus. We give God honor and we give God glory. John 13, 34 to 35. And the last time I ministered, I quoted those verses, but I said it was um, 33 and 34. So I should have said it was John 13, 34 and 35. So this is Jesus, the anointed one, and his anointing speaking to us. And I believe if you're looking at the King James Version, it would be in the red. <laughs> and as one preacher said, red words win. And God wins. Hallelujah. He's already won the battle. He um, spoiled principalities and powers. Jesus spoiled them. And he made a public show of Satan triumphing at the cross. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because Jesus disarmed principalities. He spoiled them. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the champion above all champions. And love never fails. So, so um, Jesus is speaking to us and he says, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you. So you too should love one another. So he has loved us and he's given us that love. The love of God has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. He, he will not ask us to do something without enabling us to do it, giving us the ability to do it, giving us the anointing to carry forth, to carry out what he has asked us to carry out. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you hold your place in, in a, <laughs> John chapter 13 and go to Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. For if we are in Christ, so we're born, if we're born again, we're in Christ. We're new creations of Christ. All things have passed away. The fresh and new have begun. Praise God. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision accounts for anything, but only faith activated and energized and expressed and working through love. Hallelujah. And faith works by love. And as I said the last time, because when I was speaking on forgiving others, because I, I um, quoted the verse, because um, I mentioned that um, I used to help take some of my neighbor's children to school. And one time I went to collect the boy from the nursery and her boyfriend, my neighbor's boyfriend cursed me out and he was so horrible to me. And then I thought to myself, I'm not going to do this anymore. He made me cry. He made me sad. And then um, I had a dream. I think it was the next night. The Lord gave me a dream. And it was actually this um, verse that I was, I was telling you about. But I didn't really know the exact reference for it when I was speaking to you the last time. So it was Galatians 5 verse 7. It says, you are running your race nobly. Who has interfered in, hindered, and stopped you from your heeding and following the truth? And then in verse 8, uh, it goes on to say, this evil persuasion is not from him who called you, who invited you to freedom in Christ. So we all have a, a race to run. We all have a calling of God in our lives. Praise the name of Jesus. And the calling above all callings is for us to um, love God and love others. Love others as Christ loves us. To keep that new commandment that he has given us. And why should we walk in love? Because God is love and we are imitators of Christ. Praise God. And God walks in love. We need to walk in love. God forbid, God forgives. <laughs> He's forgiven us of every sin that we have already, that we have committed and even the ones that we haven't committed because Jesus is not going back on the cross to die again. And when he said it is finished, he meant it is finished. Praise the name of Jesus. So we overcome Satan by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So um, who here placed there again in Galatians chapter five, please. And actually Holy Spirit to remembrance what I was gonna say to your people. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we it's Ephesians, thank you, Holy Spirit. Ephesians five, chapter one, because we need to imitate um God as beloved children imitate their father. So he goes on to say, the Apostle Paul goes on to say in Ephesians chapter 5, comments in verse 1. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible to those of you who are new to this ministry. Therefore, be imitators of God. Do you see God walking in unforgiveness? No. 
<laughs> do you see him walking in strife? No. Do you see him being faithful? Yes. <laughs> do you see him being unfaithful? No. Do you see God ever lying? No. Do you see um, God's scheming and conniving? No. Do you see him ever being deceitful? No. Do you see him having any bitterness in him? No. So we must get rid of all malice, strife, and bitterness. Praise the name of Jesus. Because we must remember when these things happen, like the enemy, he hates relationships. He hates good relationships. He loves strife. So he hates everything that God loves and everything that God stands for, which includes you, because God loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Some of you have never heard that God loves you. Yes, he loves you. And he loves you with an unconditional, eternal, never-ending love. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. You know, if, if someone decides to re reject Jesus and don't make him the Lord and Savior of their lives, he will not force you because he's not a bully. Satan is a bully. He only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So if there's any stealing going on in your life, it's Satan. If there's any lying, it's Satan. If there's any conniving, because he is the author of all these things, praise the name of Jesus. He's, a, he's the father of all lies and all that is false. And I'm hoping to go to um, John 8, verse 44, hopefully, but let God have his way. But uh, um, Paul, the author of Ephesians, is telling us, therefore be imitators of God, copy him and follow his example, as well beloved children imitate their father. And then he went on in verse two to say, and walk in love, esteeming and delighting in one another, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, as a slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. So God did all these things for us, you know. We need to esteem others higher than ourselves. We're not to go around the place having an exaggerated opinion of ourselves or oh, all that when the only way we're all that is with God. Because apart from God, we can do nothing. Yes, in my relationship with God, I can do all things. I am an overcomer. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above. I'm not beneath. But without him, we cannot do any of these things. We cannot walk in the fruit of the spirit. So we need to heavily depend upon God. So we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on to our own understanding in all our ways. Acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. So if I can do something well, I can glory in God. I can boast in God, but not of myself. Because it's not of might. It's not by might. It's not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. And, and Satan, the thief, he, he just wants to destroy all relationships. Because unity commands the blessings, even life forevermore. And when people walk together in unity, um, we can accomplish much. Together we stand, divided we fall. No man is an island. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, I believe it's around verse 18, it's not good for a man to be alone. So no man is an island. We need each other. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put 10,000 to flight. And the churches and all the people we need to be working together. Sometimes you may have been in a, a good relationship with someone and they've been working for you in your ministry and doing stuff but there may be a time when god will say you know i want this person to start their own ministry i want you to let them go and then um when the person wants to go you don't have to make them feel bad about themselves or never help them or support them because we as the body of christ we should not be comparing ourselves with one another you should not be saying because that person is leaving your ministry because god has called them into their own ministry you don't see it as competition praise god you, you can say oh wow this is another anointed person god has raised up to um, take the gospel to a lost and dying, and dying world this is great we can have another church around the corner or whatever and we all come together and help each other 
you're not to go about slandering that person because they left your ministry being bitter and vindictive and telling everybody oh don't go to that person's church or that meeting because that's not walking in love that's not walking in the new commandment that god has given us to walk in praise the name of jesus we give god honor and we give god glory and that is not running your course well so like when um i was taking the little boy to the nursery and sometimes after school clubs or whatever and helping out and then the enemy came in the shape of the my neighbor's boyfriend and he told me off and he made me cry and i thought i'm not going to do this anymore i'm not going to help this person anymore and then i dreamt i went to bed and i dreamt this verse as i began to read it it is um Galatians 5 7. You were running your race nobly. Who has interfered and hindered? So, who has offended you? Who has stopped the process? Praise the name of Jesus. You may have been going to church, giving tithes and offerings, working in different um, departments, giving um, alms to the poor, and doing the will of God, and then you became offended and then you stopped. So, offense stops the process. Who has hindered you? Who has stopped you from praying for your enemies? Who has stopped you from going to church? Praise God. Who has stopped you from um, giving tithes and offerings? Who has stopped you from um, <laughs> going out into the street and doing your street ministry or whatever it was that you were doing? That evil persuasion, it did not come from God. So the Lord will perfect that which concerns us and if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our hearts. But we have to continue obeying him and walking in love. You may be walking in love and doing so much for people. You know, you may have taken a stranger in into your house. Next thing you found her in bed with your husband and all these things. And for you to become spiteful and start cursing and slandering and having a lot of evil speaking and you know, starting to hate God, to become twisted, to become perverted, to become bitter inside and just spewing bitterness. Whereas before you were singing praises to God, you know, you love the Lord so much, but now you took this stranger into your house, you're taking your husband, now your husband wants a divorce and all these things are going on. And you know what? It's not even that woman that you're wrestling with. It's not even your husband because our battle is not with people. Praise God. We are not wrestling with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Praise the name of Jesus. So your problem is not that person. You need to pray. Yes, the person is, um, instead of submitting themselves to God, they're submitting themselves to the devil. <laughs> they're assisting the devil and resisting God, which you should be submitting yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And we're not to give room to the devil by walking in strife and unforgiveness. So you need to uh, focus on your God and how big he is. Continue doing good and praying that those people will be delivered. Because if you're a very good Christian and you're doing the will of God, Satan wants to stop you. He hates all Christians. He, he hates everything about God. But you have to be the better one to continue running your race. You started the race well continue because it's like when satan wanted to hinder me and stop me from helping my neighbor praise god so i had to get busy helping her again after i read the verse i dreamt it and then i found it in the bible galatians 5 7 you are running your race nobly who has interfered in hindered and stopped you from your heeding and following the truth this evil persuasion is not from him who called you who invited you to the freedom in christ so the devil works through people just like how god works through people but they work working completely different they're completely opposite from each other praise god god is love god is kind satan is hate he is unkind praise the name of jesus every good and perfect gift comes from god every evil thing and perverse thing comes from satan even though he may use people but we need to know that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood Please go to Ephesians 6 and I will take this from the King James Version of the Bible. 
because we need to cast down these evil imaginations. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. Yeah, we need to cast down imaginations and bring them into, bring everything into captivity, into the word, into the obedience of the word of God. Hallelujah. We give God glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing all good things to our remembrance. Okay, we'll start from Ephesians 6, comments in verse 10. Put on the whole armor of God, and love is a part of the armor, even though you don't see it listed as you read from verses 10 to 19. But love, you know, faith works by love. Anything that is not done in love is not, is not going to last forever. This is not going to work, you know, because sometimes, well, the works that we do, it, and if, if it's not done with right motives, it's all going to be burnt up. Praise the name of Jesus. So everything must be done out of love. Praise God. We must follow God who is the father of our spirits. So he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Not in our might. You know, many times you may be feeling weak or whatever. I can't go on anymore. This is too much. But you can go on because God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 13, they had no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation make a way to escape? I'll just read that quickly from the King James Version. Because some of you, you're going through so many trials and tribulations. You're thinking, where is God? You know, well, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Praise God. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will never suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So God will make a way despite how unbearable things seem to be. You know, he has left us his peace, not the peace of the world. So we, we can um, do the will of the Father. Just keep on trusting him. Job kept on doing the will of the Father. You know, Job had four serious attacks in one day. One including all of his children died in that day. And what did Job did? He shaved and he worshipped God. He said, naked I came into this world and without possessions and naked shall I leave. You know, some people are trusting in chariots, in horses, in gold and all these things, you know. But at the end of the day, we came into this world naked and we're going to leave here naked. So some people are stealing, killing and destroying to get to the top, even to get to the top of their ministry, sometimes they're just um, bad mouth another preacher, you know, say bad things, you know, they want to banish that preacher from off of the face of the earth, you know, thinking they're in competition. But yet um, the Bible tells us to compare yourselves not one to each other. You know, we're all individuals and we have, we're doing the work of the Lord. We're one, one body. God is the head. And we are the body and a house divided against itself cannot stand. It will fall. So we must not fight against each other. Not fighting with someone because they speak in tongues. Oh, they're of the devil. Or oh, I don't speak in tongues. I'm right. You're wrong. And so on. Because we all know in part and we prophesy in part. And we are human beings and we make mistakes. And sometimes we may realize, oh, what I thought was right all the time was wrong. So we must not have a well estimate ourselves higher than we really are because if we can do something good it's only because god has helped us all our help comes from the lord so we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of god and he will exalt us in due time you know god is our vindicator we don't have to um, vindicate ourselves the battle is not ours but it's the lord's you look at joseph Praise the name of Jesus. Joseph, he had two dreams and he made the mistake of telling his own brothers, you know, people who he thought would love him. Praise the name of Jesus. People who should have cared about him. And, and the brothers, you know, when he had the first dream, they hated him. He had the second dream, they hated him all the more. Even his father told him off, you know, and, and the brothers sold him to uh, an officer. Well, they sold him to an instrument. And Ishmael, and he sold them. He sold him to an officer of Pharaoh, praise God. And he was brought into 
Potiphar's house. And then um, he was doing so well, everything that Potiphar, everything that he did in Potiphar's house prospered and succeeded. And Potiphar could see the difference, you know. Everything was flourishing. It was going nicely. He, he knew that Joseph had a godly spirit. He knew that God was with him. You know, because everything Joseph did succeeded. And Joseph didn't, he didn't have a bad attitude. Praise the name of Jesus. And then Potiphar's wife, she started to pay attention to Joseph and she found him attractive. I don't know if her husband, Potiphar, was too much away from the house. The scripture said he paid no attention. Potiphar paid no attention to anything apart from the food that he ate. So I don't know if he stopped paying attention to his um, appearances, if he had a pot belly, if he paid no attention to his wife and she had strained eyes. And then she had falsely accused um, Joseph of attempted rape. And he didn't. And then he was put into prison, praise the name of Jesus. And then Joseph, he met everything that he was doing, you know, the um, prison master saw that he was a good worker and he had favor with God and the prison prison warden promoted him and he didn't pay any attention to whatever Joseph did because he was in training in prison, running that prison so that one day when he would be next in line after Pharaoh, praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And so he saw the baker and the butler, they were both sad and it was unusual for the people to be sad because otherwise Joseph wouldn't have inquired, you know, he was surprised that they were so upset and he inquired what was wrong. And then um, he had, well, they told them their dreams and the baker was beheaded, praise the name of Jesus. And the butler, he was restored to his former um, position working with Pharaoh. And he told the butler to remember him, you know. And the butler was restored. He was so happy and he forgot everything about Joseph, you know. And sometimes God can deliberately make that happen when he's testing your character to see, are you still going to love me when everything is going bad in your life? When you're going through trials, when you're going through tribulations, when you seem to be doing everything right and everything wrong is happening to you. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you work faithfully in a company and then when it's time for someone to be um, redundant you're the first one to be redundant yet yeah, you were the first one in the last one out always did over time paid for or unpaid you know you're always diligent and, and you did your work well and you've had friends and you've helped them you've given arms to the poor served in ministries hallelujah street ministry you were there prayer meetings you were there and whenever there's a promotion you're always on the uh, you're always overlooked never good enough but God is maybe testing your character and allow you not to be seen praise God hallelujah and so all these things were happening to Joseph but he had a good attitude you know he forgave the um butler praise the name of Jesus and then one day when the Pharaoh had a had dream a dream and he couldn't interpret it he dreamt about the five um fat sumptuous cows and the tin ones and the tin ones ate up the um, fat ones and then he did an interpretation and then God um, brought to the butler the remembrance that Joseph had um, interpreted his dreams and then he told Pharaoh and then Joseph came and he interpreted the dreams as most of us know otherwise you can find the um, story in Genesis I think it's from Genesis chapter 37 to around um, chapter 40 or somewhere about that the story about Joseph so you can read that for yourself so Joseph he forgave he forgave his brothers even in the end the brothers had to come to him for food and everything and he took care of them and not only them and his father but their young ones and even when his father died Joseph said the um, thing that you meant for harm God meant it for good praise and images and he told them not to fear and he continued to take care of them so even though the wrong things may be happening to you, you hold your peace and forgive like Joseph did. Praise the name of Jesus. I don't have time to go through all those scriptures. These things are not in my notes. No, it's from Genesis 37 to about Genesis chapter 50. You can read about Joseph. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God honor. And we give God glory. But this is the end anyway. After all these horrible things that happened to Joseph, Joseph said in Genesis 50 verse 20, 
As for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are this day. Now he's saying now, verse 21. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. So after the father, his father had passed away, the brothers thought, well, Joseph will take revenge on them and so on. But Joseph had a um, heart. He had a heart after God, even though the Bible says that David had a heart after God. I believe Joseph had a heart after God as well. Because evil was constantly happening to him and he continued to do good. He was always overcoming evil with good. We've never seen him anywhere in the Bible complaining having a pity party about himself, slandering people. I didn't hear him say anything evil about the um, butler. Because when the butler was restored, he didn't remember Joseph until long after. So Joseph is comforting his brothers after his father's death. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for and support you and your little ones. And he comforted them in part in sheer hope strength and spoke to their hearts kindly and, th and that is what God is doing to you some of you have sinned you think you've committed blasphemy you think you've done this you've done that you think you're too bad for God but God is saying you're not too bad for me I love you so much with such an everlasting eternal love that I gave my only begotten son I gave everything that I had and he died the painful death on the cross. And if you were the only sinner, he would have still died for you on that cross. And he is saying, I love you. Come home, sister. Come home, brother. It doesn't matter what you have done. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If, 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 if we had never sinned, if we could save ourselves, we wouldn't need a savior. Praise God, hallelujah. But Jesus can be your savior. You, you need to forgive yourself. You're, you're not too bad for God. Hallelujah. He's ready to receive you in his arms. He's saying, come home. Jesus is calling us. The song says, come home. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's have a quick look at 1 John 1. 9. It's going completely different from how I expected it to go, but let the Holy Spirit have his way. Right. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continually and continuously, sorry, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, everything not in conformity to his will and to his purpose, thought, and action. We give God honor and we give God glory. You know, if, if we claim that we have not sinned, we contradict his word and make him out to be false and a liar. And his word is not in us. The divine message of the gospel is not in our hearts. So um, person who is saying they're without sin, <laughs> they're actually lying because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The only one who hasn't sinned is Jesus. God's only begotten son because he who knew no sin was made sin so that we may be made the righteousness of God. There was a song was saying, you know, person was saying they've never been a sinner, they've never sinned and they're, you know, basically they're saying they're a friend of Jesus, you know, and they were saying they're going to heaven. Basically that's what that song was saying, but it was actually mocking God and God says, be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man so he shall reap. Because he said, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Therefore, all can be saved. Through the righteousness of one man, Jesus Christ, all can be made righteous. But you just have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you shall be saved. So let's go back to our key scripture. I didn't even check when I started um, ministering to you to see how long I should go. But Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. John 13, 34 to 35. So he says, I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you. So to love the brethren unconditionally. So you too should love one another. By this, by this what? By the love we have for each other. 
shall all, everybody say all who are watching, men know that you are my disciples if you love one another, if you keep on showing love among yourselves. Praise the name of Jesus. Could this be what is lacking in the body of Christ? That's why there's so much preaching, but not power and demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the name of Jesus. Because Paul spoke, he preached, and um, signs and wonders followed. There was power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory. You know, even Peter, the um, disciples and apostles, they were so powerful. Even Peter's shadow that would overshadow someone, people were getting healed. So people would want to put these sick people out just for Peter's shadow to overshadow them so that they could be healed. Their um, apostles, they, they were so anointed, they were so powerful. Hallelujah, that in one day, 3,000 people not only were saved, added to the church, but they were baptized that day. You know, they, they um, continually had fellowship with each other. They continually, um, they had the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread. Hallelujah, and the church was powerful. Praise God, it was so powerful that people couldn't lie to the Holy Spirit and get away with it like Ananias and Sapphira, you know when they lighted the Holy Spirit and they both died and were buried. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to get that reverence of God because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hallelujah. The psalmist said in Psalm 14, I believe it's verse one, the empty headed fool said in his heart, there is no God. Hallelujah. We, we must not be fools. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give God glory because the early church was um, on so much fire. Let's read um, Acts 19, commencing verse 11. And God did unusual, extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul, so that handkerchiefs or towels or aprons, which had touched his skin, were carried away and put upon the sick and their dis diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them so you know um paul he carried such a powerful anointing he walked in so much love you know that he carried these handkerchiefs and these things that touched the people and they were healed of their diseases praise the images and the unclean spirits left them so maybe the church is could be lacking power because it's not we're not walking in love enough enough or showing love towards each other enough as how god would want us to be you know we're supposed to bear each other's burdens we're supposed to be forgiving each other walking in love love covers a multitude of sin not always exposing someone's faults praise the name of jesus believe in the best of others Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. You know, now he's become a man. He's done away with, with those um, silly things, you know, not walking in love, fighting with the brethren, esteeming himself higher. Praise the name of Jesus. Looking away from all that would distract, but to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So he was believing the best in others, praying for his enemies. Praise God. Because Paul, he, he went through so much. Praise God. He was stoned. He was shipwrecked. Many times he suffered nakedness, peril, but he still continued to serve God. So just because you're walking with the Lord, it doesn't mean things are going to be smooth. In the world, we will have tribulation. Let's have a look at John 16, 33. As I conclude, I begin to conclude. Hallelujah. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of a good cheer. God has overcome the world. So evil things may happen to you, but overcome evil with good, like uh, we see even Paul and Silas, they did it, they were praying and singing praises in, in the prison in Acts chapter 16, and then the Lord sent a, a mighty earthquake and everybody's um, shackles and things were loose, but then they, they didn't escape, and they had to go through that punishment so the prison guard and his family could be saved. You know, so when the prison guard, the prison warden, he was about to kill himself, and then they were saying, you know, don't, don't kill yourself. We are all here. That in itself was a miracle. Praise the name of Jesus. So when you begin to praise God, the miracles can come forth. 
Jehoshaphat, you know, he was serving God with gladness. The enemies came against him, the Amorites, the Moabites, and all of these, the Jesuits, and all these people were coming against him. You know, but um, Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles chapter 20, he called the fast and they fasted and they prayed. They all came together, all of Judea, they all came together and they fasted and prayed. And the word of the Lord came through the prophet. Praise the name of Jesus. And the, the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. You don't have to fight in this battle. And they went out singing praises to the Lord and the enemy self-slaughtered. So you don't have to fight this fight. You don't have to um, seek vengeance. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You overcome evil with good. Don't render evil for evil, but render evil with good. Just like Job, he rendered evil with good. All his friends, they thought he had sinned. But after Job prayed for his friends, God turned around his captivity and he gave Job double for his trouble. He had 10 children. They said his daughters were the fairest. They're the most beautiful children. Praise the name of Jesus. And God restored Job's fortune, and his latter ending was better than his beginning. So I'm here to tell you, your ending is going to be better than your beginning. Just walk in peace, walk in love, forgive, praise God. Pray for your enemies. If your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. If, he, if, if, if he's hungry, give him food. Praise the name of Jesus. Pray for him. Someone prayed for you, so you were saved. You pray for someone else, so they can be saved. Father God, we just thank you so much for your word, God. We thank you that your word is perfect, God. We thank you that your word cannot fail. We thank you, God, with you all things are possible. So Lord, I just pray for everyone who is um, walking in the spirit of unforgiveness, has uh, had opportunity to be mad and to open the door for the devil, for the devil to come and to steal, kill and destroy. I pray you'll soften our hearts and you release the spirit of forgiveness upon us. Lord, we confess when we have walked in unforgiveness, bitterness towards people, and you've forgiven us so much, help us to forgive others as you have forgiven us. We thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and share. You can tap in Pastor Pamela D. Daniels and the Google search engine or YouTube and bring up my channel, subscribe and share. And when you share, you help to take the gospel to a loss and dying world. What you do for someone else, someone will do for you. You may be praying for someone in your one of your family members to be saved. Maybe just simply by sharing the gospel that I have preached or someone else has preached uh, may quicken the answer to your prayer. So be blessed. Have a great day. God bless you.